Minnesota Vikings have been around since 1961. And I just want them to win a damn Super Bowl before I die. Welcome to Before I Die with Judd and Jesse on Purple Daily and Score North. Can you take me higher? No. Na, 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 na. <laughs> to a place where uh, where the Vikings uh, win Super Bowls. No, you yeah. cannot. This is this week's Before I Die. I'm Jesse Pierce, <clears throat> writer for NHL.com. He's Judd Zolgeb, Mr. Positivity. And over here we got Ross Brendel. Ross, why do you follow and love the Minnesota Vikings? You know, the pain lets you know that you're still alive, but in this case, not a lot of pain just acceptance of a top 11 draft pick and a 7 and 10 record tough tough go although you know what guys a little bit of optimism here is it tough considering this they finished 7 and 10 your minnesota vikings losing 30 to 20 to detroit the uh, last night finished the season 7 and 10 now they opened said season 1 and 4 at that point, I believe we all packed our bags. I was like, good, let's take this to loser town. I don't even care right now, right? I wanted to move up. However, there's that little five game win streak to bring them six and four. And then they go one and six. Like, I don't, wh- what was this team, Judd? What can you happen? Can we be disappointed? Should we have expected this outcome? Where do we fall in how our emotions, how do we process these emotions and feelings on this Monday on Before I Die? Like everything with this team, we process them through grief. Um, we probably eat too much. We uh, we drink too much because this team is, you know what? They're the Vikings. And as Phil always says, they're a gravitational pull towards 500. Even in years where things sh- should go wrong. You know, what's sad about it is the five-game win streak. We all thought, oh, my God, there might be something here. And then Mon plays or Mon plays Dobbs plays and Dobbs played really well. And so I think that this is just a lot of being a Vikings fan. I will say this. The 11th pick is not bad. The 11th pick to move up from there feels pretty good um, as opposed to being, you know, where you could have been. It's just that, you know, lose a couple more games and you'd be in even better position. But at the end of the day, uh, an unsatisfying season haunted by turnovers and injuries, among other things. As Judd mentioned, the Vikings securing that number 11 spot in the draft coming up this April. Last time the Minnesota Vikings picked the 11th, they took cornerback Trey Waynes in 2015. Prior to that, they were in the top uh, 10 then as well, where they took Anthony Barr at 8 in 2014. Now, guys, the Minnesota Vikings had the number 11 pick, and they did pick a quarterback once upon a time. In 1999, can anybody tell me who that quarterback was? Go ahead, Roscoe. Get your roll on. <laughs> but but which way? We never figured this out. Which way do you roll? Do they go forward, forward or backward? Forward. They go forward? Rolled, okay. I thought he rolled yeah. forward. but, but Dante. That pick, yeah, Dante and that pick Culpepper. Was obtained from Washington in the Brad Johnson trade because Randall Cunningham was going to be the guy. And so, but but they also were smart enough to take uh, Culpepper and then that's the same year that the Vikings actually had, of course, a very late pick in the first round yes. and took the infamous Demetrius Underwood, who disappeared from Mankato. Unfortunately, we would now be much more sympathetic to his um, mental health issues. But um, in this case, the Vikings have earned the 11th pick. I think what's interesting here, Judd and Jesse, is with the 11th pick Judd mentioned, it, it could have been a lot worse. There is a path to move up. It's still going to cost you a lot, but it's not going to cost you quite like it would to go from 19 to 3. 11 to 3 is more manageable, but it's still going to cost you future capital. On the Dante Culpepper thing, the league was set up differently at the time. If you took a quarterback in the first round, you often always waited to play them at least six games, at least eight games more often you would wait an entire season like the Vikings did, and I think that was to his benefit. I think there was benefit with Aaron Rodgers waiting, benefit with Jordan Love waiting, and there's obviously been others who have sat and waited their turn to play. It will be interesting to see, no matter what the Vikings do at quarterback, should they go with a quarterback in the draft somewhere in the first round? Maybe that's at pick 30, or maybe that's at pick 3. What will the plan be? And I think maybe we'll spend some time on that later this pod or down the road or heck, you know, before the season next year when we're back for another season of Before I Die. But that's what I'm intrigued by. When people talk about Dante Culpepper, they talk about how great he was in his first season. I actually saw it in some of the comments, getting comments ready for YouTube. A couple people that said Dante played right away. 
no, he didn't. He sat an entire year and then played. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm interested to what this path looks like for the Minnesota Vikings because I do believe in some way, shape, or form the quarterback room is going to shake up a little bit this off season. Judd, remind me where did Dante fall on your all time quarterback list that we talked about last oh. week? Oh, we got shredded for this, by the way. <laughs> um, so Tarkington was one. I think I I debated Cousins being two now and Dante Culpepper three. Mm-hmm. But you know Dante Culpepper. Um, was very good for a short time period, but it wasn't like I mean, he should have been a franchise guy for years and obviously blew out his knee and then got traded because he didn't want to be here. Um, so I think he fell third. I'm pretty sure. That sounds about right. I, I'd agree with that. I don't hate that. Uh, you had mentioned he got injured. Injuries, obviously, another storyline for the Minnesota Vikings this season. We'll get to Kirk Cousins and talking about him in just a little bit. But JJ, Justin Jefferson, you guys, finished with 1,074 yards in just 10 games because he missed a handful, several, in case you guys can't do math there, seven games uh, <laughs> with his injury. What do you make, Judd, of the frustration we saw out of Justin Jefferson? And actually, I saw an interesting stat on Twitter today that – Minnesota was actually one in eight in games that Justin Jefferson played more than a half, which I found very, very peculiar. Um, what did you make of JJ's frustration? I know I think today they had locker clean out, correct? Did you guys yeah. chat with him? What were kind of his feelings on the end of the season? I was not there because my Monday workload is so intense, Jesse, that I was <laughs> doing podcasts all day long. Um, Kirk, Kirk also talked extensively uh, to re- reporters and the possibility of a hometown discount, which of course he sort of was like, yeah, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, um, I did not hear, I don't know if Justin talked or not. Now at the end of the game yesterday, he did talk extensively and talked about, you know, he still thinks that a championship can be won here. His frustration one is, and you know, it's good for, it's good TV, right? When the cameras catch a player being mad, but gotta be honest in the, in the, um, wide array of Viking receivers, sideline meltdowns that don't rate, you know, Moss and Carter would yell at Culpepper constantly. Um, Diggs started to melt down. I mean, Thielen would, would melt down at times. Uh, I also think of Jefferson's defense about this whole thing is that was a season long meltdown. Like it's been a frustrating year to your point, you know, if they were, and I didn't even think of this, but if they were one and eight in games in which he played more than a half, you know, um, he was, I think he's frustrated. I do not think that means he wants to leave. Um, I, I think we talked about this last week. I don't think he's leaving because I think he's he's either going to get paid by the Vikings or he ain't going to training camp in uh, next summer. But he's not going to play on the fifth year option of his contract. He's going to get an, an extension. So do I make a lot of the fact that he, he was upset in what's been a really long, tough season? No, I don't. I thought it was good frustration. That's the frustration you kind of want to see. He's just upset. The season hasn't gone the way he wanted it to. We can joke all we want about being okay with the Vikings losing yesterday. The players on the field wanted to win the game, and as he was continually frustrated, it was because they were continually down on the scoreboard. And to Judd's point, on the off chance, maybe he would think about wanting to get out of here. It's really only going to take the Vikings to go to him and say, hey, Justin, We're going to make you the highest paid non-quarterback in the league, and you're also going to make more money than a good chunk of the quarterbacks in the league on the first or second year of your deal. So I think a lot of that you can get past, and I do want to see that, and I do think that Justin Jefferson wants to be here. And if you do this right in the offseason, again, if you're going to take a quarterback in the first round, and I think it's time that they do, There's a lot of press in here. That doesn't mean you're going to be a bad football team next year. If Kirk Cousins is back as your starter or you find the right bridge guy on a one- or two-year deal, you can be competitive and compete next year. You know, where on the priority list, and we can talk about this a little bit more in next week's episode, but Judd, where do you think the priority is for extending Jefferson? I'm feeling like a four-year extension seems fair, but when you have other guys who we will get into too, like Kirk Cousins, like Harrison Smith, Neil Hunter, K.J. Osborne, that you have to look at and figure out what you're going to do with their contracts, um, where does J.J. fall in that priority list? I think it's one of the top ones um, because it can be done. It should get done. Um, There's not the urgency of he's about to become a free agent, but there is the urgency of he's not going to play on the fifth-year option. So I think there's a definite urgency now. So there also is going to be on Kirk because if they're going to extend him, it needs to get done. Now, could he be allowed to walk? Absolutely. Daniil Hunter is one. But I mean, I, 
I think that there is a major um, feeling that Justin Jefferson has to get done. So I, I would not say that anyone at TCO Performance Center is sleeping on the need to get that contract complete. And to your point, it's going to be a four or five year, very, very rich deal. And Justin Jefferson, when he has played, has proven he deserves that. Yeah, 100%. How close do you think they were last year, Judd? Because there were a lot of reports prior to this season that everybody thought they were close. So then I'm naturally wondering if they were close last year, how much more is the number going to change based off of what he did this year in a shortened year or, or shortened season rather for him due to injuries? Or is it not going to change at all? Was it just to the point of, hey, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot that goes into this. We're 80% of the way there. Let's get through the season and we'll finalize it next year. I'm, I'm just curious on that part. I think it's the second part. I, I think it's the second part because, look, he when he did play, he's fantastic. But we knew that, right? But I don't think that it was like this. He bet on himself. I, I think everyone wanted to get it done and it didn't get done. I don't think it was the players saying, you know what, let's wait a year and let's see what I can do. We all know his his um, ceiling. We all know how great this guy is. So, you know, I think it would have provided a lot more security, especially going into a season in which he was hurt if it had gotten done. Uh, but I don't think that this year changed that. I, I, I don't think he... I don't think he immensely helped himself and I don't think he hurt himself. I think he was, he was just always going to get paid. Um, but yeah, it, it is because I've heard the same thing, Ross. It's interesting that it didn't get done because you did hear a lot of, it was really close. It was really close. And I don't remember ever hearing, okay, but here's why it didn't get completed. So again, I, unless he gets traded, I don't see like I, I don't see this being a problem. And I think that the probability of him being traded is very, very, very small. That all seems fair. Again, I want to talk about that a little bit more in next week's episode, our final wonk, 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 final episode of the season. Thanks to the Vikings and poo-pooing our playoff fun and hopes. But moving on, we had talked about this just a little bit ago. Um, there are a couple players that are pending free agents and guys that might not return in purple next season, let's start with the biggest one, Kirk Cousins. Cousins now was tied for most touchdown passes, 18 in the NFL, and ranked second in passing yards with 2,331 before he ruptured his right Achilles tendon in week eight. Mm. Judd, what is the sense? It kind of goes back and forth. To me, it always feels like, yep, he wants to be here, but he wants to get paid more and he wants to test free agency. No, he doesn't think his Achilles is going to be a problem when he tests free agency. Um, you had mentioned just a little bit ago that you don't think there'll be a hometown discount. What is? What are your Spidey, what are your Zilged senses telling you about Kirk Cousins? You like that? <laughs> Zilgadian. My senses. Zilgadian. <laughs> yes, here they are. Yes. So here's Kirk's quote from today that seems to be drawing attention, okay? Kirk's quote in talking um, to the media on Locker Room Cleanout Day was, quote, it's not about the dollars, but it is about what the dollars represent. <laughs> Which he says a coach told him years ago, a young coach. Um, I think this is all a very, uh, you know, Kirk's not a dumb guy. Let's, you know, Kirk's a very, Kirk, Kirk's a savvy dude. Um I think this is all about who wants what. And here's the thing. So we know Kevin O'Connell wants Kirk back. What we don't know is how how many people in the building want Kirk back or if they want to try to draft a guy. Again, you're in pretty good position, if, certainly if you move up as well, right, to draft a guy. So I'd love to be a fly on the wall at the meetings about this because I got to guess there's a faction that 1,000% wants Kirk back. The players also, of course, are saying that. But what are they supposed to say? No, I don't want Kirk Cousins back. Like we just saw backups um, for approximately half the season. But my my Zolgadian spy spidey senses <laughs> tell me that I I think that there will be an effort made to retain him, um, e even though I don't necessarily agree with that personally. But it also comes down to this: if Kirk gives a discount, it's going to be for the first time. He's never given a discount before. And supposedly he offered to take somewhat of a discount last year, and the Vikings said no. And if they said no last March, are they going to say yes this time? This is going to be a fascinating decision because it's going to directly impact the future of this franchise. And if they can find a QB for the long term who's young and cheaper, or if they're going to keep Kirk around. And if you're going to keep Kirk around, it ain't going to be much longer. It's going to be a couple of years probably.
Well, that's it, Judd. For this question for both of you, for, from me as you were talking, would I would, wouldn't you guys take Cousins back? Again, the money thing is interesting, but at the right deal, I would take him back for a year or two, even on a two-year deal where he gets most of his money in year one, knowing that eventually the succession plan, again, this all hinges on if you draft a quarterback in the first round, knowing that the succession plan would be to go to that quarterback when Cousins is gone, whether that's in a year or two, because in my opinion, if it's not Kirk Cousins, you're likely to bring in a bridge guy anyways and ask him to start four to six games next year or maybe more before you go to that rookie. So at the right dollar value, I have no problem with Kirk Cousins. I've never had a problem with him. It's just always been at the money that he brings in allowing for a bit of a tougher roster rebuild. So my question to you guys, I mean, Judd, the way you said that, it seems like you're kind of adamant you don't want him back. But my argument would be you need some veteran starting quarterback on the roster next year. That's a score north way. You all, you, we hate uh We hate him. Yeah, yep, yep. we well, just pile on him. <laughs> I've gone back and forth on, on this because the problem is if you bring Kirk back, I don't think there's any way you're drafting a quarterback in the first round. And so you're not going to get one of the best ones. Um, and the, the problem is then if you bring Kirk back, you're probably going to draft a defensive player and let Hunter go because you can't keep everybody and you're going to sign Jefferson. And so now you've got a defense and Brian Flores worked miracles until the last four games. The depth really... was exposed. The well, depth and they was have no exposed. Cornerbacks. Yep. They have no cornerbacks because crazy screwed the pooch at 22. Mm -hmm. I, that, that, that draft is terrible. And so, you know what? And so we, we talked about this on our, uh, on our uh, PD today of hottest Vikings takes. And I said, what I would do is I would trade up, make a significant trade to get, try and get like the third or fourth pick third through three through five. But I would go to the Patriots and say, you guys just can't build Belichick. You, you're not really all that close. We'll give you a very good lucrative package. And then I would take uh, Jaden Daniels. Cause if you mm -hmm. do what you're saying, Ross, here's the problem. You are, again, you are putting a finger in the dike and nothing more, and eventually it's going to go. Um, this team, this team, the Wilfs and Quazy and O'Connell, and I think they, those two know, know this, at some point in time, you got to accept your fate, which is re-bringing everyone back, which is what you did two years ago. And that was cute. That was fun. 13 wins, then a playoff loss. Um, so I think that there's a pretty good case to be made that this is a great time to turn the page. No offense to Kirk. I don't even hate Kirk. I love Kirk, but you'd be your defense without Hunter and with like one added guy and cornerbacks a mess. I, I don't know. I don't Especially hate a two year deal for Kirk, but you're right. I, I kind of like Daniel Hunter. I want to find a way to bring Daniel Hunter back and let's talk about him. You guys a little bit more 29 years old, a career high, 16.5 sacks, 22 tackles for loss cannot be franchise tagged and he's going to be paid more per year on his next con next contract than the 17 million he made this season. Can you even afford to bring him back? I mean, and is if you do, is he in the range of the Nick Bosa's and the Miles Garrett's <laughs> and all of that, right? Like, I mean, are you looking yeah. at that who are Nick Bosa, I think is what 34, 35 million a year or something like that. Like, is he in that for edge rushers and, and where do, where does that fall? Is Daniel Hunter, done with the Vikings because they maybe simply can't afford him no matter what they do. I think if Kirk comes back, he's done. Um, I think if Kirk does not come back, it provides an option, but you bring up a really good point, which is are the Vikings and the, the answer to the question might be no. If the, if the Hunter camp, which by the way, this is all their fault. They took a second contract that was crap. Yes. Yep. They, they cut, this is why you don't cut hometown discounts. Cause it, at the end of the day, it doesn't help anybody. Cause then you're going to management asking for more and then you're, you know, holding out. Um, but I think that's, that's the big question. How many teams are going to it? And it would just take one come after, after Daniel and say, yeah, dude, you're sort of old, but we're going to pay you like Bosa. And if you do that, I don't know the Vikings are going to match that again. This just all to me is, is about the opportunity to retool. But if I could bring Daniel back, I certainly would love to Roscoe. I think in a perfect world, it just, to echo what you said, Judd, you would do it. But let's say, again, NFL contracts, for the most part, his deal would be front-loaded. You could more than likely get out from it after a few years. But let's say, well, what did you say, Judd, or maybe it was you, Jesse, a, a, maybe a four-year deal, three-, four-year deal mm -hmm. for Daniil Hunter. He's 29. 
next season. I think he'll turn 30. I could be wrong on that. But his right. cliff his cliff will come eventually. It's just when is it? You know, at that position. And maybe he maybe because he is an athletic freak, maybe even more so than most in the NFL, maybe his cliff doesn't come till the mid 30s. But that's one thing I would be worried about with him. It all goes back to what Judd said. And Judd, I do agree with you. In a perfect world, this is the jumping off point. This is the rebuilding point. This is where you decide, let's just bring in the bridge quarterback on a 15 million year deal. Maybe he starts a handful of games before we turn it over to rookie guy. You let Daniil walk to help get your cap in order. So two, three years from now, you're hopefully making another run at getting back to the, what the Vikings historically do get to an NFC championship game once every seven to 10 years. And here's a thought, maybe actually kick the door down this time and win that NFC championship game. I'd love to have him back, but it's the same thing I said about Kirk Cousins. It's all at the term and it's all at the price. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of that's what the Vikings are willing to do or not do is going to be dictated by when they decide what or what not they're going to do at the quarterback situation. It all starts there. We all know it. Do the Minnesota Vikings know it? One thing that I think the Minnesota Vikings probably know, as well as anybody who watched, Harrison Smith. 35, will turn 35, excuse me, on February 2nd, but it feels like he's the easiest cap casualty to cut. You could save $11.3 million if you cut him before June 1st. Um, and he even kind of hinted, Judd, at retirement yesterday, right? Saying yeah. it's hard to have the desire. 12 seasons, he's done some tremendous things, but where do you guys feel Harrison Smith falls? Is he kind of done with the Vikings? Do you think he retires and goes out on his own terms versus Minnesota parting ways? He sounded like a guy on Sunday who's done playing, but a lot of guys, like for the next month, a lot of guys will sound like they're done. And then comes springtime, it starts to get nice. Football is in the air. The grass is green. And they're like, I'm not done yet. I mean, hell, we saw Brett Favre pull that, that act time after time after time. Um, Harrison Smith has a life outside of football. I think he loves the sport for sure. And I mean, he's, he's one of the great Viking safeties. But, you know, he loves to fly. He's got a bunch of hobbies he's got a wife and kid or kids now i think it's it's one kid um i sense he's done i think he should be done i don't think he has a lot left to offer and mm -hmm. by that i mean he he's in my group of he was really elite like it's one thing if you're just a guy right if you're just a guy and you want to keep playing and embarrass yourself i don't give a damn that's fine but when you're in that elite group and then you drop off that cliff and you're like i gotta keep going that's sad to me I, I think Harrison Smith would be really, really well served to follow through on how he sounded on Sunday and walk away. And I would and I don't know if there is a, a supposed waiting period, but I would put him in the ring of honor if he did that next year. Like, well, I think he's that good that, and he deserves that type of respect. Well, one thing I, I was going to ask you is, is Harrison Smith, we've talked about this on this podcast, is he Hall of Fame or Hall of Very Good. I think he's at bar minimum, bare minimum, excuse me, Hall of Very Good. I think yeah. we're talking about a player that does have a chance to be in the NFL Hall of Fame. But for Harrison Smith, I think it's this simple. Does he value, does he feel like at the end of the day to validate his career, he wants to make another run at a Super Bowl or win a Super Bowl? And to your point, Judd, I don't think he feels that, that he needs that as validation right. for a career like sometimes other players do, not just in football. When you start saying things like, I'm at peace with it, to me, that seems like you made a decision two months ago, three months ago, six huh. weeks ago. And to me, it sounds like a player who's going to retire now. Maybe the right team reaches out, Judd. Maybe somebody gets injured and the but Kansas who? City Chiefs reach out yeah. in August. You know, maybe that would tempt you a little bit, but there's something to be said for playing your entire career. And again, a very good career with one team. I feel like he's probably done, which on the business side of things, the Vikings would obviously appreciate. They don't have to cut him, right? So I, I feel like he's probably done, and I think we'll get... I don't know, Judd, what would you say? I think we'll get clarity on that in the next couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, he, he made a weird uh, statement about, you won't, I'm not going to tell you when I'm done. Yeah. You'll just know or something like that. <laughs> 
but he, he said does... he wasn't being ominous, and then he yeah. said my shoulder hurts. <laughs> yeah, it was it was all very weird. But I I think the important thing is I think he is one of those sort of throwback guys that doesn't give a damn what we think. Yeah, and so yeah, I don't think I think if he retires, he's retired. If you put a southern drawl on those quotes from Harrison Smith, you can tell he played with Brett Favre. That is literally some of those quotes. You can yeah. read those and tell me that, that that Brett Favre said them, and I would say, yeah. The female fans are weeping if Harrison Smith were to leave. Yeah, good-looking guy, no question about it. Good-looking guy. There are 26 Minnesota Vikings hitting free agency. Again, we can dive more into some of those next week in our final episode of Before I Die, including KJ Osborne, DJ Wanham, other names that you might be curious about. But, Roscoe, let's hit them with the you comments from YouTube. Comments from YouTube. We got two lined up for you today. One we've spent a little bit of time on, at least the player, but not specifically the injury. From David Houston, 9420. What if Kirk Cousins cannot play like he did before the injury? And I think it's a great question. Everybody automatically yeah. assumes in today's day and age, players come back from injury as good or better than ever. But again, to his point, what if Kirk cannot play like he did before the injury? So my question to you two, any idea what type of player Kirk might be for the Vikings or insert team name here next year? Any idea what he might look like? Jesse, break down Kirk Cousins coming off of a torn Achilles. What does he look like? Is he suddenly Fran Tarkenton for the negative commenter in the YouTube? Tarkenton? <laughs> Um, no, because he dresses still the way he is. But that being said, I think that bodes well to Kirk's offseason. Now, as everybody who has a dad, we all have fathers out there. We all know how dedicated they are to their crafts, whether that's grilling, whether that's cars, whether that's chauffeuring and sports, all of that. Kirk Cousins is that guy. He is the epitome of that guy. So that being said, I think Kirk comes back, maybe not as good as he has been in recent years, but he's not going to fall off. I think Kirk Cousins is still going to be your best option should he be back with the Minnesota Vikings because as we saw in the quarterback carousel all year long, there was nothing to compare to Kirk. Now, even if you go and get a quarterback, as we talked about, you're going to need to wait to bring him up and get him into play. So Kirk coming back, with or without this Achilles injury is going to be fine. It is going to be just fine. We will be happy with it because you have the very polarizing Kirk Cousins where people are going to be thrilled. They're going to be mad. Either way, Kirk's going to come back, do his thing with his Coles cash, and we're all going to love him for it. I'm not as optimistic. <laughs> He's going to be 36 in August. This is the first. I mean, the good news is this is the first real injury of his football career, at least in the National Football League. But He's going to be 36, and it's a Achilles. Which is a like, young young age, if you were to ask many. Yeah, very young. It's a, yeah, it's or, a oh, very it's, young age. Lot, it's young, a lot of things it, you can do in life at 36. It's young for humans. It's very old for human football <laughs> players. Um, and look, I mean, Kirk, it's not like he ran a bunch before, and that's going to be pulled back now. Um, but, I, but I mean, I think that's going to be a legit concern. And, and I'm sure the Vikings will, in negotiations, if and when they talk to Kirk, will use that against Kirk, right? Yeah, like he, like he we're already not give. He already doesn't move great, Judd. Sorry to cut yeah. you off. So like incentives instead of things. That that's why I just think right now, the more I think about this, now is a good time to pivot. If you're the Vikings, do I think Kirk has a future? Absolutely. Do I think that's like some extended future? No. You know, I, I mean, Tom Brady's a special, special player, and he got what to what forty five or so. You know. Most guys don't, and I know I know Rodgers is trying to, but we'll see on that one too. So well, I'm not sure. Favre. Favre was 40 when he retired. Yeah. Favre's, la Favre's last year. Favre's a month old older than I am. And did I compare Kirk Cousins to Brett Favre? You betcha I did. You yeah. betcha. Did I yeah. compare Kirk Cousins <laughs> to yeah. Brett Favre? You bet I did. Brett Favre, Brett Favre was a special individual, and I don't mean that all in a good way. Mm -hmm. Kirk uh, far I more normal. Before we go to question number two in comments from YouTube, I just want to know, Jesse, are you cold or are you working on something for a kiddo? I saw the blanket, I think, <laughs> no, I or the shocked. jacket came into play. What is it's happening here? It's, it's just a nice, I got chilly, okay. all right? Okay. Sorry, it's guys. It's a shaw. Yeah. No, it's, you know it's, it's totally 36 fine. 36 ain't that young. You start to get cold. <laughs> you start to get cold. cold. 
My fingers know, hurt. So am my I. fingers hurt. My wait, fingers hurt. Yeah. <laughs> wait till you're at the X tonight for the uh You've Dallas... seen me bring my blankets. I have no fear it's about bringing blankets in up into that press box. That's the PWHL fine. game on Saturday was miserable up there. I was freezing. Is it okay, quick point, here's our hockey talk. Was it colder for the PWHL game just because there's slightly less bodies in there? Is that Generally why? speaking. Because that was the same way when it was the COVID year when they allowed media to come to games, but no fans. It was freezing. Like, we literally okay. discussed having, yeah. with PR staff, having heaters up there. Space and, heaters. Yes, because it was so gosh darn cold. Here is comment number two from YouTube. This comes from Ryan in Sartell. By the way, what a great YouTube name. You get to say your name and you say where you're from. Brilliant work there, Ryan in Sartell. This uh, goes to you, Judd, and we talked about it again. When you said Cousins was second all-time in Vikings history, our quarterback rankings, I threw up a little in my mouth. Dude is 36 with one playoff win. Most overpaid in Vikings history, maybe. Again, that from Ryan in Sartell. Here's my question to you two. Can't use Kirk Cousins. Ryan already kind of took him. Biggest free agent busts or just the most money the Vikings have spent on a player and the return was not nearly what it should have been. I'm going to say I'm thinking... just my favorite. I got a favorite. Okay. okay, go ahead. Unless you count love boats and strippers as a as good return, Fred Smoot easily Some of us do. wins Sweet. that. But we should. But that's my favorite, right? Like he was over. <laughs> that's all anybody knows him for. Even the, the kids that are listening to the show, they're like, I know that Fred Smoot name. Yeah. yeah, not for the reasons that you should know the Fred Smoot name. Yeah. Fred Smoot, for sure. Scouting out strip clubs w- while there for a game <laughs> against in, in Atlanta <laughs> against the Falcons to fly them up here. Oh, um, brilliant. I'm going to say Bernard Berrien. Okay. Bernard yeah, Berrien are... was a bad, but, but I mean, Jess is right on Smoot. But here's the thing, Ryan, keep this in mind. What I said about Kirk is an indictment of the Vikings franchise. Yes. That's the scary thing is you're not wrong to throw up because the reality is you've got Tarkington and then take your pick, but you have no Super Bowls. And it ain't like Culpepper was blowing through op- opponents. I mean, he got him to what? One championship game. And then he got him a win against the Packers. But that's it, right? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, for playoffs. Two playoff is, wins. Yep. But I mean, again, no. No Super Bowl, so Ryan, you're not wrong. That's the that's the sad thing. Reflect today on how bad the quarterback resume has been here as a whole. Yeah, and I think in Ryan's defense, I don't think he was coming after you. I think that was no, the main point that Ryan. that go he after that Joe. yeah go after we all want to go after, after, go after, after me, Ryan. It's bad. It's <laughs> okay, so, real bad. So here's one for you. I don't think the Vikings uh, paid him a pretty penny, but I do remember he got a decent contract. And then did Fred Smoot like things? Remember Dwight Smith got caught doing you know what in a parking ramp. Um, oh, no, stairwell. Stairwell. Yep. Blocky. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of all the places, I get it. You know, sometimes you know the moment strikes and it's go time. Uh, no, I stairwell don't. Do at, stairwell at stairwell uh, no. and uh, Blocky. I'm I'm no, I'm not sure. Ross, I don't, Clearly, I don't you've get never that. been in that stairwell after a few. No, I'm just I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Calm down, um, people. Yeah. Is that the one that's heated? It has candles and incense. Is it that it's one? Beautiful. And she was from Wisconsin too, so it's probably a Packer fan. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, double. Yeah, and, uh, and for- a friend of mine, a friend of mine, um, uh, his significant other worked for the city, and the whole thing was on tape. Oh yes. So like they could take that into court. The whole. Thing was taped and let's just say all four it minutes wasn't, or was it it was a little longer than we it had? was let's just say let's just say it was the whole thing <laughs> were they running the two minute drill yes oh boy yes at first i thought it might have been just a partial thing but it wasn't it's a reminder to all we're always being watched just yeah. so you just yeah, tell case. your kids jesse when they grow up <laughs> on you know stay out of public spaces but yes, that's, that's a good call. I'm going to circle this back very quickly to Bernard Berrien, looking Bernard Berrien up. The interesting thing on him was he did kind of what a lot of guys do, whether it's intentional or not. Perhaps his best year in the league was his final year with Chicago before he hit free agency. Oh, yeah. Where he caught, yeah, he caught 71 passes, yep. had 951 yards receiving and five touchdowns. 
Now, in his first year with the Vikings, he Good. did have he did have 48 receptions, but yep. 964 yards. So they were able to stretch the field with him more. Judd, was his 99 yard touchdown was that in 2008 with Gus Farad, or was that in a later year? 2008. Okay, so and 99. He he Farm literally got a, like a tenth much. of his receiving yards were with Gus Farad on that one play, basically. In, in a way, yeah, yeah. And then he's just sort of. He just sort of dropped off, and I don't think Brett, you know, because Brett loved uh, Sidney Rice in two thousand nine, and then I think the end here came when he uh, when he took some gratuitous, unnecessary shot af- after uh, John Creasel ripped him on Twitter at the time, and Barian said something about John's condition, and oh and, no, and that got people Jesus. to the locker. Pat Kessler came to the locker room to <laughs> interrogate Barry, and it was great. I love Kessler. I- I don't remember that at all. Pat Kessler is awesome, by the way. You think I'm a go for football home oh, or follow? I, I yeah, know follow. Pat and Mim. They're great people. <laughs> follow great people. Follow Pat Kessler. Oh, that's that's good stuff. I I mean, not good to rip on him, but good that good that Pat well, Kessler grilled him for it. Oh, he got him good. Yeah, it was fantastic. Good, good. Jerry deserved it. Well, again, thank you to every single one of you for participating in our comments on YouTube. Don't forget to drop your comments for this week's episode and next week when we say our final farewells. Uh, Let's hit them with that Before I Die, boys. Time now for the Before I Die crew to give us their Before I Die. Roscoe, why don't you kick us off? I think this will be unpopular, but that's okay. I'm willing to be the person that goes with the unpopular topics i would they'll never do this and i know why and i know judd will say why they would never do it and i get it it's all about the money and the almighty dollar which i understand i miss the old days of the nfl draft being rounds one through three on saturday four through seven on sunday i I miss it it's a good one it's really tough to give up three days of your life for the nfl draft and i'm a nerd so i will i'll clear my schedule do you clear day three I'll make it. I try to. Like, I won't stop myself from doing things, but I will pay attention to it if I can. Hmm. Yeah, you got to keep tabs on your gophers, Judd. That's typically where the <laughs> gophers go. Not this year, though. Not this year. No. Yeah, not, Newbin's going in the first or second round. But I, I just, it was better as a two-day event on the weekend. I think it was better for fans, too. So that's mine. Before I die, the NFL draft will right or wrong and go back to Saturday, Sunday. Or how about this? How about, like, Sunday and then finish it on a Monday night, something like that. That probably wouldn't I work like out Saturday, as well. But Sunday, but round one on Thursday helps score north. So oh, tremendously! Yep, for our so party. I'm, so I like that part. I'm all for that. So how about this? Let's do round one on Thursday. Take a break. Build the excitement back up. Two through four on Saturday. Five through seven. And let's not kid ourselves. Eventually, the NFL is going to wise up and say. You know, we can make this eight or nine rounds, and people will keep watching. No, it's, no, it's I don't gonna think happen. Will. Because it was 12 at one point. It was. It, I think it was yeah. more than that in the it early days. It was at one point. I don't think they're going to more rounds. I think Finally, we're okay this is there. The, mind you, Stanley Cup playoffs are also happening in April, ladies and gentlemen. I once, this is a true, true story, I ditched a dude who wanted to take me on a date because he wanted to go watch the NFL draft. And I was like, but it's the Stanley Cup finals. And we couldn't but come. But it's or, the Cup. The, it's the playoffs. And we couldn't come to an agreement. So I was like, hey, I'm not going on this date with you anymore. And so I went to the bar and watched the playoffs instead. True story. Well, why didn't he just say we can do both? He hated like, hockey, apparently. I don't know. He really just really mass. needed to watch the draft. Needed to watch the draft. Yeah. I, like, and I like, needed was to this not watch the draft. This was in Brainerd, so that somewhere? probably says a lot about the people. Okay, so, but the yeah. relationship no, wasn't going to progress. No, it was a first date. It was a first date. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. And if you're listening in Brainerd, we apologize. The opinion yeah. of Jesse is not the opinion <laughs> of Score North. I just nor... <laughs> True story. Oh, that's all I got. Let's bring let's before I die, the draft will be on Saturday and Sunday again. <laughs> what do you got? So is this off of like Tinder or something? Or <laughs> a, 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 this is an app? Okay. Again, 36. So this is pre-Tinder days, but it was like a Tinder like thing. Like Tinder wasn't a thing, but it was another online app. Like it might have it wasn't as nice as match.com because I had tried match.com. But it was, yeah, like he was like, well, yeah, and he was all jacked about the NFL draft. And I was just getting annoyed. And I was like, I don't care. I'd rather watch hockey. Like, I'd rather do this. And he was like, well, don't you want to watch it? It's all I want to do is watch the draft. I'm like, I don't need to be there to watch the draft and eat wings with you. I think we were going to Buffalo Wild Wings was like the date spot. And I was like, mm, I'm good. Some, sometimes too, Jesse, in your defense, or even people like me that like the draft, your excitement does wane sometimes just depending on yeah. where your team is picking. This year, I think it will be of more interest to Vikings fans than perhaps years past. Oh, I, I just hope they don't trade back. Um, 
All right, here's mine. And this is going to be extremely geeky. But it, as you both know, I go to Vikings games here in the press box, but I now, you know, watch them at home. I think if I was the president of football on TV, National Football League, okay, I think you should have pockets of announcers assigned to divisions. Because if I hear Daryl Johnston one more time tell me that that be, be, because O'Connell told him we love Madison and he tries to sell me that bill of goods, you know, and and that Joe Davis Moose Johnston crew is not bad, but my God, can we please get people that know the teams? So like, and every once in a while, if you want to bring in the Jim Nance and Romo's, right? Buck and Aikman on ESPN, the big the big guns, that's fine. But when it comes to these subset, you know, secondary teams, can we just get the same ones so they're familiar with the teams? Because I'm watching that yesterday, and I'm like, Daryl Johnston has, and the guy was a good player. He's been a broadcaster for a long time. He had no, he had no clue. He had absolutely no clue, and it's not his fault because he bounces yeah. around from game to game. Can we just assign? I'm not saying that has to be the same. I'm saying just you know a pocket of guys that only work a certain division, including the North so that you don't sound like an idiot when you're talking about a guy who's had an incredibly disappointing year. I'm all for this. As long as the Vikings do not get stuck with Mark Sanchez or Jonathan Vilma, you can't convince oh, Vilma, me. Right. You, you can't, you can't convince me. Jonathan Vilma played in the NFL, even though I saw it with my own eyes and he cheated to win a Super Bowl and cheated to beat the Vikings. That's not why I no. dislike him. He doesn't say anything in the broadcast that none of us could say and half the time he's speaking in sentences where they're not real sentences they're not even real words he i'm sorry jonathan i hope you're watching this and you've forgotten more about football allegedly than i'll ever you have learn. To apologize you just but ripped him he's awful he's unlistenable people think i'm unlistenable well there are certain there are certain for sure analysts that could be jettisoned very very easily and yes, I agree with you on that. The Vikings would assuredly get Kenny Albert, right? And Chris Myers. Kenny Albert's fine. I love Kenny Albert. Kenny He's Albert's good. got the Minnesota Wild game, I think, on uh, Wednesday. Kenny is great for hockey. Book. Kenny's his fantastic book. at hockey. I, I love listening to him do hockey. Oh, and his dad was a legend. Yes! Yes! <laughs> All right. From got, downtown. Uh, before I die, Taco Bell's just going to start giving you the hot sauce packets without asking you anymore. I don't need you to ask me. You know I want that hot sauce packet. I don't need oh to go God. through the semantics of it. Just put it in the bag. And if you don't want the hot sauce packet, you can simply take it home and throw it away or keep it for your grandkids because that's what my parents did. They kept all of these packets of condiments in a drawer at their house. Everyone has one. If you don't, you should start one. And it's good forever. So Taco Bell, uh, who will be a sponsor of me just as a brand in general, one day, one lifetime. Um, I don't need you to ask. Just give me the I got a question back, for you yes. on Taco Bell. Yes. And by the way, Taco Bell, no offense. Love you. If you want to sponsor us, great. What's up with the music? And I don't even mind it, but on the commercials, like their last two commercial campaigns are like these. And I, I actually Judd, like I haven't seen a songs. commercial in like seven years. What are you the, talking about? The new, the <laughs> new co- the commercial. The <laughs> I new get all the streaming. I don't watch. Right? No, the, but on sports. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the new commercial you're complaining about, Judd, is a new green. It's it's a new Green Day song. Okay, yeah, I actually like it, but I'm just saying it doesn't like it like doesn't fit them like, at all. It doesn't right, fit the brand exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to be to be clear, Green Day. I was at the Dookie show at Roy Wilkins back in the day. I mean, I was at Nirvana. I love I love those bands. I'm just confused by the fact that Ross is exactly right. I'm, I like look up. I'm like, oh, I like the song. And I'm like, Taco Bell. And then they got that boing at the end. I'm very confused. I, I want to it. I want to know. Uh, I have that drawer that Jesse talks about. But right now, my drawer, the only packets that are in there, which this always makes me laugh that I keep them because I have plenty of them and it lasts forever. Mine's filled with soy sauce packets. It's always soy sauce. Yeah, yeah like, it's always yeah, soy sauce. Always soy and, sauce too. and I love that any restaurant you go to or fast food joint like Taco Bell they hoard those things like they're going out of style. Yeah. And also when they give it to you, it's so tiny and has the most minuscule amount of sauce as if they couldn't just put a handful in everybody's bag. Well, and the, yeah, because it gets on the wrapper then too when you're trying to distribute across. Like I like an even distribution of any sort of condiments and it just gets on the wrapper. It's a, it's a thing, Judge. <laughs> an even distribution. 
You talk about OCD right there. I've got I'm, my I'm issues, problem. but that's really OCD right there. It's just like on a hot dog, there can't be too much ketchup on one side. It's got to be like a spread. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Before oh, I God. Die. As always, I'm Jesse Pierce. He's John Zolgad. And over there, we got producer Ross. Uh, final episode next week where we will say our final farewells uh, to the Minnesota Vikings. Good riddance. God bless. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope you had the time of your life in Hennepin County. <laughs>